Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Ryan Hurd. Welcome to this wonderful evening to Savvy Broadcasting. Uh, it was kind of uh, short order that you contacted me recently, and I was like, when I heard what you're doing in the world, I was like, you are the perfect guest to have on Savvy. Most of our listeners, I don't know if you know, started business later in life. We have launched businesses all the way up to enterprise, but many of our business owners started after an event. Maybe they left a job or the kid went to college and they saw a need in the marketplace and they created a business. Boom. Um, so, but a lot of them are on the older side, say 40 or 50 and might have parents they're taking care of such as you did and why you created your wonderful technology to help with caregiving of elder parents and such. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about your backstory and how you came to creating your technology and, and all of that. Sure. Well, listen, first I want to say thank you for having me on. I really appreciate this. This is, this is great. I'm so excited to have this conversation. Um, so I've been in technology for 30 years. I'm a classic serial entrepreneur that's had a couple of companies and uh, having a lot of fun, quite frankly. Um, where Caregiver Smart Solutions comes from is because uh, my father got cancer and when he was going through his chemo treatments, you know, I was originally concerned with him taking his medication. And there was a one very specific medication for his neuropathy. And he had to take it like on a 24 hour cycle. So if he took it at one o'clock on Tuesday, he would have to take it on one o'clock on Wednesday. And then from there, it went to other things like, <laughs> did dad get up this morning? You know, is he eating? And I didn't know, but it was called activity of daily living. So I've tried to figure out, is there a way that I can do it? And like everybody else, I put a camera in and, and that doesn't work because it's an invasion of privacy. Nobody wants a camera in their house. Mm -hmm. So I tried to use some off the shelf stuff and, and that doesn't work either. You, you need a little more um, intelligence. You need a little more, you know, uh, to get ahead of things. So mm -hmm. basically I figured something out. I put it together. I patented it. And here we are today, Caregiver Smart Solutions. Awesome. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Many years ago, I moved into an apartment building in Brooklyn, New York. And the <laughs> first week we were there, there was a tenant right beneath us where we got a knock at the door and they said, can we get in? My father's not answering. He's an older uh, guy. Um, he's not answering. He's, his apartment's right beneath yours. He's not opening the door. We're really worried. Can we go into your... Um, I don't know, would you call that thing? Yeah. You, come on, you know what I'm talking about. You go out yeah. the window. Yeah, yeah. Fire escape. That's it. So <laughs> they go down the fire escape, they go into his window and they see him laying on the ground. Oh my they, gosh. They get in, they remove the um, air conditioning, they get into the apartment. Unfortunately, he's already dead. Ugh. And it, so it was horrible. Oh. They were really hysterical. They called the ambulance and, you know, whatever, morgue. And, but, you know, something like what you're offering, Caregiver Smart Solutions, would have been the perfect thing for them because they could have been checking on dad all day long to make sure his vitals are good, that he's okay. And it gives you that peace of mind. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. And, and I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit. <laughs> I, I do apologize, everybody. But, you know, and today in America, with all the technology and stuff we have, that should never happen. You mm -hmm. know, there's enough stuff out there that, and, and our aging loved ones know this, you know, they realize where they are in life. And, mm -hmm. and they, everybody knows somebody that, you know, fell in the shower or fell in this room and nobody found them for a couple of hours mm -hmm. or God forbid a day or, or worse, what happened there. That shouldn't happen. And that's one of the reasons why I developed this, because there's a couple of things that, mm -hmm. that I believe. Number one, if you can get your loved one to wear something, you know, like a pendant, oh, great. That, that's awesome. But what we found is maybe 10% of our aging loved ones will actually wear something. And then when they get home, they generally take it off because they believe that they're safe in their home and they should. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, most events happen in the home, specifically between the bedroom and bathroom or, or in the kitchen. So how do I work within an environment that doesn't require that person to do anything. They don't have to wear anything. They, they just need to live. And that's what I'm doing. So at Caregiver Smart Solutions, we are a tool to help you monitor your loved one as they age in place. Because like you said, caregiving is, caregiving is stressful. And mm -hmm. all you want is a little more peace of mind and time back in your life. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just talking to some of my friends who 
who've cared for their parents, their parents are like, well, I, you know, they're worried. So they're like, we might have yeah. to put you in a home. We don't want you living by yourself because they're having certain problems. And often the parents will feel like we're, they're much more capable than they actually are. Um, like I want to drive. So no, no, maybe that's a bad idea. Um, but they're like, no, we know you're not in a good place. Yeah. But what this allows your technology is that they get to stay in their own house, the age in place. I love that idea because yeah. nothing is more heart wrenching than being removed from like my husband's parents have been in their house for 45 years. Imagine wow. having to leave, you know, a place you feel so safe in after right. living there for 45 years. Not only is it your memories, you know, that's maybe where you raised your family. It's it's your community. It's your friends. Mm -hmm. And what it really is, is two main things. It's it's all about independence and dignity. And a, a way to think about that is remember when you originally got the keys to the car mm -hmm. and, and you left, you, you took your parents car and you went to, I don't know, Quick Check or McDonald's or wherever you hung yeah. out. You know, it was great. You had independence. Now, 60 plus years later, we're saying, Mom you know, you can't drive anymore. So how do we enable them to live on their own for as long as possible? Mm -hmm. And and it also saves money. I mean, especially up here in the Northeast, I'm from Jersey, if you can't tell, <laughs> you know, it's, it's 7,500 bucks to go in assisted living. So how do we enable them to retain their independence and dignity for as long as possible while giving you peace of mind? And, and what w another way that we think about it is this, you know, at the end of the day, the problem that we're solving is no matter where your loved one lives, they close that front door and it's a black hole of information. You have no idea what's going on. You call mom up and how are you doing? And you always get, I'm fine, right? She doesn't <laughs> want to bother you. Yeah. And all you want to be is a fly on the wall. Yeah, and That's what we are. We're a fly yeah. on the wall. Yeah. And, and just able to check on mom, make sure she's okay. Yeah. Now I'd love for you to share, cause there's some amazing, um, ta um, ta uh, what do you call it? Technologies that you yeah. have within your thing that can check the only heart rate, but are they eating? Which I was like, how do you even Oh, there's do so that? many cool things. Yeah. Matter of fact, well, since I'm a tech guy, yeah, let me see if I can show you now this is okay. live. So, you know, okay. I mean, it may or may not work <laughs> okay. Okay. here. This is the core kit. You can see that. Uh -huh. Well, let me see if I can. All right, here we go. Okay. So this is the core kit. The core kit is designed to cover roughly 80% of all households. When you open it up, you're going to see two things. Number one, kind of like a planogram. So it's going to show you what the sensors are. It's also going to tell you. And then the other thing, you're going to see this card. Installing this is as simple as scanning the card to download the app. Then you're going to plug in the hub and peel and stick the sensors. Now, a couple of things are going on here. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see? That's yeah, I can. Yeah, it's small. Okay. Well, the sensors are the size of a quarter. Why is that important? Well, you said it before. It's about independence and dignity, and nobody wants to be spied on. So it was really important to make this the smallest possible sensor that's out there. Now, none of this is cameras. We don't believe in cameras on the inside of the house. Mm -hmm. But what it is, is we're looking at movement. So let's say you know, bedroom, bathroom, living room, dining room, kitchen. We're also looking at doors. So think of like the back door, side door, medicine mm -hmm. cabinet, refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And then here we're looking at temperature and humidity. So typically we put in the bathroom because it's really important that um, mom takes a shower every couple of days. You could also, let's say, get another one for the uh, stove, mm -hmm. you know, because it would be really important to know that if mom left the oven on something on the stove and then walked out the front door. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of things that we're doing. And these tiny non-invasive sensors then send that information to an app. Let me see. Let's see if technology is still going to work with us here. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. We're, uh, we're getting there. Face ID. Okay. Can wow. you see that? Yeah, totally. All right. So here, this is the app. So those sensors send the information to the app. And right here, you very quickly can tell it's 53 degrees outside, it's 73 degrees inside. Why is that important? Let's say, let's say mom is up in Canada. What is it in Ottawa right now? I have no idea, <laughs> right? <laughs> but if it was 30 degrees outside and it was 70 degrees inside, right there, you know everything is fine. But if it was 
30 degrees outside and 50 degrees inside, that's mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about this is it will tell you. So you can set indicators like if it goes below 32 outside, I want to know. If it mm -hmm. go, goes below 59 inside, I want to know. And also on the other end, right? If it's above 90 outside, I want to know. If it's above 80 inside. So it's, yeah. it's all about the health and well-being of that person. And as you can see here, a little bit. You know, I have a green screen. And of course, mm -hmm. my icons are green. So it's a yeah, little hard yeah. to see. No, no, I see. And what's but, good is I'm thinking not only for the safety of your parents inside the home, but what if someone breaches the home? Yeah. And now you see, okay, why is the door open for such a long period? And I exactly. see dad moving in another room. What's going on? And, What's and then, going on? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it could be, it could be for a good reason. So maybe, maybe it's for, um, you know, that in in-home services, like a visiting angels or visiting nurses is going to come mm -hmm. over. So when you start seeing that activity, let's say 12 o'clock, well, you know, that person's there. But then exactly. if you see stuff and it's not supposed to be there, well, then you can make that call. And other things too, think of it like this. Hmm. Let's say the refrigerator. Let's say you want to know that mom is eating normally. So you just want to keep track of the refrigerator. But how many times have you gone to the food store and threw the stuff in the refrigerator? Maybe you were in a rush and you kind of just, you know, chuck it closed, but it doesn't really close. And then a couple of minutes later, you're sitting on the couch and you hear this, this high end beeping. Like, what is that noise? <laughs> well, that's the fridge. Mm -hmm. The problem is as we get older, our ears start having a harder time hearing the lows and the highs. So most of the time, grandma's not going to hear that. Mm -hmm. Now, she will find out the refrigerator is open, but it could be six or seven hours later when she gets her tea or makes her lunch. Now, that could be a problem, especially when you're talking about deli meat and, and leftovers. Now, fast forward to having caregiver smart solutions in there. The exact same thing can happen, but let's say five minutes later, you get an indication in your app, refrigerator's open. You call mom up, say, hey, ma, how you doing? I'm fine. And do me a favor. You check the fridge. I think it's open. And she gets up, scurries over there and closes the fridge. So crisis averted. And those are the kind of things that we're doing. That's just on a basic level, but bigger. Think of like a urinary tract infection. If mom's mm -hmm. going to the bathroom a lot overnight. Basically, anything that's out of the norm for that person's habits. Cause that's what we're really looking at is that is the habits of that loved one. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And, uh, I, I love it. Do you, does your mom sometimes think, or your dad, uh, <laughs> sometimes think, uh, are you psychic or something? You know, cause it must feel weird that you can guess things that he doesn't see that you're there. Well, it's, it's like, are you sure you don't have cameras here? <laughs> well, it's interesting because what we believe is, as I said, right now, it's a tool to help you monitor your loved one. But going forward, right now, we're just in step one. Step two, our next generation, this is where it starts getting really exciting because you know I'm a geek by heart with technology, but I look at it a little different because I'm not looking at it from like, uh, um, you know, like thingies, you know, like Alexa and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it like if our loved one is getting older, what kind of tools are they going to need? So for example, let's say, uh, let's say dad, dad is 76 years old. And for the most part, he's fine. So I just generally, I just want to know, did he get up? Is he taking his medication? Is he okay? Just general stuff. But then let's say as he ages, he gets a, a, a bit of early on stage dementia. He starts getting forgetful. So now I'm starting to worry. He's got 10 different medications and, and he's forgetting things. So now what we're doing is we're partnering with best of breed going forward. Mm -hmm. So this way, for example, a smart bottle cap. So now not only can we see them open up that medicine cabinet, but now we can track every single one of those 10 medications. And we can see, did he open this today? Is he supposed to do this today or tomorrow? We can keep track of those kind of things. Other things. So let's envision a world where I did say cameras are no good, but yeah. there's always a but, right? Yeah. Not on the inside, but on the outside. Mm -hmm. So imagine if maybe grandma has a, a, a little bit of dementia. So what's important is A, I need to know if she walked out that door. B, I want to know if she left the stove on. And mm -hmm. C, if she doesn't come back in, let's say, five minutes, I need 
the best available information, which is what was she wearing when she left the house and at what time? Mm -hmm. So um, imagine partnering up with a, a video doorbell. So this way we could collect that data, send it to you, and God forbid, in the, in the worst possible case, you can call up the authorities and furnish them with the stuff that they need, the most important stuff. Yeah, That's because that, the kind of things we're doing. Yeah, because now you can tell them exactly what mom's wearing. I know what she looks like. Here's, you know, yeah, but now she left you can. at 802 yeah. and she's wearing. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And this, you know, I'm thinking if you partner, this could be good for the whole family. Let's say you're living, right. with, your parents are living with you, but you have kids who get yeah. out and get into mischief. My uh, husband just told me that he did something really naughty at three years old. His parents <laughs> were, they, he was naughty, naughty, naughty. He was hiding up in his room, listening, listening, listening. When the parents went to work on something in the basement, he scurried on out in the, in the Bronx and he walked to the closest elevated train um, oh, no. the two train and went to the platform because he heard his mom was going to the hospital to visit a relative. He's like, I'll just take the train to the, hospital not knowing where the hospital was but he gets right. on the platform and the cops see him immediately going what are you doing up here three-year-old <laughs> and so they immediately ask him thank god they had trained him what's your name where do you right. live and he kept saying over and over and over again but they were trying to figure out he didn't know his phone number at three but he knew where he lived so anyway they got him back home but it would have been great had maybe he didn't yeah. go there or ended up somewhere else in the street had the parents have that connection with the doorbell thing where yeah. they could see him walk out, see what he's wearing and tell the police, okay, here's what he looks like. He was just wearing this. He just left about 20 minutes ago. He's three years old. Yeah. The fascinating thing is the use cases. So again, yeah. I'm on a mission to really change the world because here's a way that I can really help somebody gain a little more peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned is some amazing use cases. So we've talked about, you know, mom and being worried about her, but like you said, there's there's kids. There's also, even if that loved one lives, if you have like a mother and daughter, mm -hmm. still, I mean, if you want to get out and, and if you're working or maybe you're part of the sandwich generation, you're married, you have kids and you're mm -hmm. taking care of an aging loved one. Mm -hmm. Or we have another case where this person is actually in a wheelchair and for them to give them back a little independence where it's kind of like a mother and daughter, but yeah. now he can literally have his space again mm -hmm. And still have everybody, you know, keep track of him. So we still got his back, yet now he has a little bit more of independence. And that's that's really what we all want. We all want that independence and dignity. And the other yeah. thing that we found is when you talk about like age-restricted communities, like the villages down in Florida or Sunrise mm -hmm. City, a lot of times even friends want to make sure that they're okay. And as I said before, nobody wants to be that person that falls in the shower and isn't found for a couple of hours. Mm. So here's another way to to use technology to have your back, even between friends. It doesn't even have to be like the adult child and the parents. It's just between friends. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how we're seeing people use this. It's very exciting, actually. No, it completely. I can see totally many applications for this i mean even in that same apartment building i'm mentioning I, years later there was another older irish man in his <laughs> 90s living by himself he didn't really have family and then sadly one day he did pass and yeah. they only found him a couple of days later because of sadly the smell um yeah. but had we had um some sort of technology like that we could have known that he had had a heart attack or was in distress and right. gotten him the help he needed because it was actually one of those amazing august days where it's like a hundred and something degrees <gasps> yeah well and that is... also helps like in it, it also happens in assisted living facilities mm -hmm. because you know unlike a nursing home an assisted living facility is really more like a I want to say a social environment with apartments, just like Brooklyn, it's yeah. the exact same thing. And mm -hmm. what we've seen is, let's say, let's call her Mary. Let's say Mary, um, she gets up in the morning, but she doesn't usually go to eat with everybody. She'll she'll stay in her apartment, she'll eat there and whatnot. And you don't usually see Mary until like 12 or one o'clock lunchtime, where then she'll go down and she'll sit with her friends at the lunch. So that's the first time, the first time anybody would know that Mary's missing. Well, here, here is a situation where we would know if something happened to Mary way earlier. And it, that's what it's all about. It's all about compressing that time and knowing what's going on. So it's just a cool way of using the technology. Now, tell me if 
something's not going on and Mary is not doing her usual thing and you get a notification. Does it do a ding or something? Because I'm thinking even the people yeah. in the assisted, yeah, they could become busy, forget to check, but it will give you like an emergency alert or something. Right. So for you, um, if it's your mom, you're going to get notifications right there on your phone. Mm -hmm. If it's an assisted living facility, what we've developed is a portal. So think of, envision this. Let's say it's a facility that has 100 residential units. It, it's hard to track all those especially at night. The night is the problem child, right? Mm -hmm. Here is a way that on one screen, the nurse's aid station can see all 100 apartments. And really it's just green, yellow, and red. So okay. if everybody's green, you know, you've got We're Mr. Good. Smith in 4A, he's good. Everybody's good. But let's say it's the morning time. And let's say Mr. Smith normally gets up at 6.30 and now it's, I don't know, 7.15. Well, he goes yellow. I'm not saying that there's a problem. I'm just saying, eh, you know, pay attention. So he'll come up to the top as yellow. Mm -hmm. But let's say Mary, who normally gets up at 630 and now it's 730, quarter to eight, she goes red. Mm -hmm. Get off your butt, send somebody over to Mary's apartment, find out what's going on. Same thing overnight. Let's say somebody yeah. gets up to go to the bathroom. That person goes yellow. And then mm -hmm. once they get back into the bed, well, then they go green again. Mm -hmm. Again, it's it's just an easy way to leverage technology to really make sure the health and well-being of the residents are there, especially after COVID. You know, you want to make yeah. sure if I'm going to put my loved one in that facility, I want to know they're doing everything possible to make sure that person is is OK. Yeah, I, I love this. Um, and I, I love that it gives you that alert so you can boom, yeah. see, OK, there might be something going on here. Just turn yellow. Let me keep an eye on it. Right. And then, and then, of course, you know, if it gets worse and hightail on over there. Uh, well, you know, Brian, this has been fabulous. I'm so grateful that you came today to share about Caregiver Smart Solutions. How can our audience get one installed today if they need it for failing <laughs> parents or maybe they just want to keep uh, tabs on their kids? How could they do that? Great question. So there's two ways. Number one, you can use that whole World Wide Web. Go to caregiversmartsolutions.com or you can give us a call. It's 888 585-5022. Again, it's 888-585-5022. Awesome. Well, Ryan Hurd, I just have to thank you again for <laughs> all the wonderful work you're doing and all the wonderful work uh, Caregiver Smart Solution is doing to make the world a better place and use technology for good because it's, it's an awesome, you know, technology is awesome. It does many Absolutely. wonderful things. So I thank you again for coming to Savvy Broadcasting today. Thank you for having me on. You betcha. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.